For decades, the battle has raged on waterways the country over. Okay, may maybe not decades, but like at least a few years. For a few years, the battle has raged on waterways the country over. It just really doesn't sound that dramatic anymore though, does it? No, but it's probably more accurate. Anyway, particularly since the start of the pandemic, there's been one question recreational paddlers have asked time and time again. Which kayak reigns supreme? The inflatable? or the foldable. Sales of both went nuts after the pandemic hit and people from all walks of life realized that kayaking was a fun way to get outside and play when they couldn't go anywhere else. But it's not always feasible for people from all walks of life to own a giant rigid plastic or fiberglass boat that they have to haul to and from the river or lake. Hence the inflatable and foldable kayak. They make it possible for people who either don't have a way to transport a full-size kayak or don't have a place to store a full-size kayak to still own a kayak. Which is a beautiful thing. But trying to decide between an inflatable kayak and a foldable one isn't quite as beautiful, especially if sustainability is a top priority. Because let's be honest, in most cases, neither the inflatable nor a foldable kayak are going to last as long as a hard body. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> so when it comes to choosing, you're really gonna have to weigh your options. Fortunately, we tested one of each so we could help you break down which one is right for you and which, if either, is more sustainable. The inflatable Aquaglide Cirrus Ultra Light or the innovative foldable Oru Beach LT Sport. And for this review, we actually tested the tandem version of the Aquaglide Cirrus, but we'll include specs for the 110 or single version just so it's more of an apples to apples comparison. Let's start with the Oru. The Beach LT Sport can handle up to 300 pounds, is 12 feet and one inch long, and weighs in at 28 pounds. The Cirrus Ultralight 110 or single version can also handle up to 300 pounds, is 11 feet long, but comes in at only 14.75 pounds. And finally, the Cirrus 150 or tandem version can handle 600 pounds, is 14 feet 9 inches long, and is still lighter than the Oru at 20.6 pounds. So set up and break down time. Of course, you know, with practice, you're going to be able to do this faster over time. But the Oru was about 10 minutes setting up and about 8 minutes breaking back down. And that's at least our second attempt. This wasn't us timing ourselves the very first time we tried to set it up. We practiced on both kayaks before we timed it. But there was still a little bit of finagling <laughs> that happened that cost us a little bit of time. Sure. That said, it only took us eight to nine minutes to fully inflate the Aquaglide tandem, which means that the single is probably even less than that because there's just less volume to inflate. And then it, surprisingly, it only took us about five or six minutes to fully deflate and roll back up and get it back in the bag. I was personally surprised that it took less time than the Oru. Extremely easy to deflate and roll back up. It was, like way easier than the uh, the Intex kayaks we oh. tested a while back. Oh yeah. So they both have some accessory features. Um, the Aquaglide comes with a Molly system. So lots of those loops stitched onto the inside of the, the panels so that you can attach things like um, pouches and knives and hip packs and whatever else. Just lots of looping and there are D-rings and all kinds of places where you can lash and loop and attach things, which is really cool. On the Oru, the sport version has side rails, accessory rails, which means you can add things like fishing pole attachments and camera grips, things that you'd normally find on, say, a fishing kayak. It's a fairly universal system, and you can buy all kinds of attachment points and stuff like that for it. Let's just start with Aqua Glide. Like, I found it more comfortable for longer periods of time. I could, and we did, <laughs> paddle all day, multiple days in a row, in the Aqua Glide Cirrus, and I was never uncomfortable. The seat is obviously inflatable, so it's super squishy and adjustable. There's plenty of room to spread out your legs and stretch. I just found it very comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, if you didn't watch our Buffalo River Trail video, we'll put a link in the description below. We did, what, like three days? 
Yeah, like totally. In that inflatable, and it was very comfortable. It also had plenty of space for stashing all of that gear. Like, if you're going kayak camping, the Oru was fine for that, but there wasn't as much space in the cockpits. You have to put in bulkheads that kind of reduce the amount of usable space in the, the bow and the stern of the boat. But you also can't lash anything to the top of the kayak on the Oru, but you can with the Aquaglide. So there was tons of room to lash gear like tents and extra food and dry bags full of clothing and that sort of thing. So for kayak camping, yeah, there's way more usability with the Aquaglide. As far as durability goes, like we said, we <laughs> ran over a lot of rocks on that Buffalo River Trail. Despite having a few kind of scrape marks on the bottom of the boat at the end of our trip, uh, the boat was totally unscathed. And let me tell you, we went over a lot of little rapids. <laughs> I mean, we're talking minor abrasions here, like at the very most. I was impressed. Uh, it seems way more durable than those Intex inflatable kayaks we've tested in the past. And the detachable skeg on the bottom of the boat, even though we hit all those rocks, it held up extremely well. There weren't any chips in it. I mean, it is really thick and sturdy. very solid. <laughs> it also worked really well to keep the kayak tracking straight. Um, there was very little, you know, wiggle and movement in the nose of the kayak as we paddled, which was really nice, especially if you're going far and you want to go fast. Whereas the Oru, when you stop paddling, it does tend to kind of veer off to one side. It doesn't have a skeg, so that affects things. I like that the seat positioning on the Aqualide was highly adjustable. It's just Velcroed onto the drop stitch floor, so you can just pick it up and scoot it forward or scoot it back. Um, there are several D-rings that you can clip the seat supports to, so it's highly adjustable depending on uh, not only how long your legs might be, but whether you're kayaking with a buddy, whether you're kayaking with a dog, um, whether you're kayaking with a lot of gear, uh, <laughs> or whether you're paddling the tandem all by yourself, which we did once and maybe isn't the best idea, but you can put the seat in the middle of the boat. So the inflatable is lighter than the Oru, packs smaller, and has plenty of attachment points, which are more universally useful than, say, a rail system. Mm -hmm. The kayak is extremely stable. It just doesn't rock. So if that kind of makes you nervous, if you don't like feeling like you might tip at any point, the Aqua Glide is absolutely going to make you feel safe and secure in that boat. So the turn radius on the Aqua Glide is actually better than the Oru. Even on the tandem, it's really easy to just swing around. It had great agility for the, the size of that boat. Yeah. Honestly, it was very pleasant to paddle. I didn't love how heavy the paddles are. I would definitely do an upgrade on the paddles if I were going to get the Aqua Glide. I wouldn't go with their paddles. I'd go with like a fiberglass model. But overall, it's a great paddle experience and I had zero issues with it. No complaints at all. So the benefits of the Oru, on the other hand, it paddles more like a traditional kayak. You're sitting more in the water instead of on top of it. More of like that uh, classic kayak, you know, experience. It kind of feels more like a quality product because of its unique design, maybe? I think that's highly likely. And it, it is just a really nice paddling experience. With the Aqua Glide, as you're paddling, you frequently hear the water like slapping against the nose of the boat because it's inflatable. So it's not like cutting through the water, it's sitting on top of it which can be a little annoying if you're trying to enjoy some peace and quiet. And of course, whereas on the inflatable you have an inflatable seat pad, the Oru has a thick foam and silicone pad that you sit on, which is very comfortable. The seat back feels more supportive, more substantial than say on the inflatable. It does, the Oru seat back does feel more solid. Like you mm. have something to lean back against. Yeah. Uh, the paddle is nicer than the one you can get from Aqualide. It's highly adjustable, very lightweight. I will say that neither the Aqualide nor the Oru come with a paddle, so that's a separate purchase. In addition, the Aqualide doesn't come with a pump, so that is something you'll have to think about. You don't have to buy their pump. But you might as well because you do need a certain adapter for the specific 
valve that the Aqua Glide uses. So whichever you choose, you know, whatever. You either need their specific pump or an adapter to use with a more generic pump. Or an electric pump. Or an electric pump. And lastly, the Oru is more spacious. By which we mean the cockpit is more spacious. Yeah, so the Aqua Glide, if you are a larger person, you might be kind of rubbing up against the walls of the boat. Whereas the Oru, there was plenty of space on either side and for your legs. Speaking of, I didn't mind the Aqua Glide like footrest system, which is just a small sort of pyramid shaped block that you could move up and back along the Velcro rails. Uh, but it wasn't maybe the best footrest system. Yeah, I didn't really care for it that much because you're just the bottom of your heel is pushing up against that. I would prefer to put kind of my midfoot or my toe on that footrest. That's where the Oru footrest made a lot more sense to me. That said, deciding which kayak is more sustainable is kind of a toss-up. I think it really just depends on how you're using the kayak. The Aqua Glide is made out of biodegradable TPU. And how biodegradable is, I mean, anybody's guess. <laughs> but it is good to know that it's not just gonna sit and rot in the landfill for the rest of eternity. So sustainability on the Oru, you could pull all the little bits and pieces off of it and recycle the corrugated plastic depending on where you live. If the boat starts to break down a little bit or gets a hole in it, it should be way easier to patch than say a inflatable, depending on where that hole is. It's a lot easier if you can just slap something on a solid surface to seal up a crack or a hole or something like that. And Oru's are rated to last like 20,000 fold cycles. It's gonna be in use for a long time, basically. But let's talk about the warranty here because that's especially important when you're talking about sustainability because you want to be able to buy a product, right, that, that stays in play for the longest amount of time and that a manufacturer is going to stand behind if it needs repaired. And the Aqua Glide comes with a two-year manufacturer warranty, which isn't too bad, especially for an inflatable. And the Beach LT actually has a three-year warranty, which is pretty substantial mm -hmm. for something that can potentially wear out. Mm -hmm. As for other features of these kayaks, the Aqua Glide has a drop stitch floor, which um, I recently learned about and is really cool because how it's manufactured, it makes the base of the kayak extremely rigid. So it's almost like a hard kayak. Obviously there's quite a bit more flex to it and things like that, but it's very sturdy. So it doesn't feel like just an inflatable bottom where you sit in it and like tacos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no sag on this thing whatsoever. No, it was nice and solid. And the drop stitch floor part is completely separate from like the side and the bottom of the boat. So you can take it out, clean it up and everything, which is really nice. Yeah. So which one's more sustainable? It's a toss up, honestly. Like I said, they both have their pros and cons when it comes to end of life stuff. So just choose which one feels like it fits best for your lifestyle, I guess. So if you had to pick though, which one would you go with? Overall, I think I like the inflatable more. I like the stability of it. I like how maneuverable it is. Mm -hmm. You're on top of the water, so you're not dragging as much. Mm -hmm. or at least that's kind of how I felt when I was paddling in it. The only thing I didn't really care for was the footrest. And honestly, if, if I could only get one kayak, even though it's heavier and bigger, I might go with the Oru. I just really like the design functionality of <laughs> that boat. Like the team that designed this is really, really clever. <laughs> and I just like how it looks unfolding it like that. It feels cool and sleek. And um, did you see that it's black? <laughs> Not all of their boats are black. They only no. have a few black <laughs> options uh, these days, but um, it's my favorite color. <laughs> and it only got a little warm when paddling on the water all afternoon. So it wasn't that bad. I, I just enjoy it from a design perspective, I think. Of course, there's one more option when it comes to kayaks. Rent one. Yeah, it can seem expensive. If you're looking for an ultra budget friendly inflatable, check out the review we did of that Intex inflatable a while back. But before you decide it's too expensive, like do the math. If you're only gonna rent a kayak four times a year and it costs $35 each time, 
it's gonna take a while before you spend as much as you would on one of these. The Cirrus Ultralight Single is $12.99 and the Tandem is $16.99. And the Beach LT Sport is $14.99. Plus, a kayak that's just sitting in your garage or closet isn't just collecting dust, it's a lot of fairly environmentally unfriendly materials and manufacturing emissions that could have been saved by just renting one instead. Just saying, it's an option. No matter which you choose, weigh the pros and cons, consider the long-term cost, and then get out there and paddle to your heart's content. Then get out there and paddle on. That's wandron, but with paddling.